Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to this Dispreeze video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to best survive when up against unholy death knights, primarily in 2v2. However, these aspects can also be applied to 3v3. Unholy Death Knight has always been sort of a soft counter, so to say, to Discipline Priest, as Unholy's main weakness has always been uptime, and when up against Discipline Priest, they can have near enough full uptime. Also, Discipline has historically lacked strong single target heals, and relied on absorbs, and with Unholy Death Knights bringing Necrotic Strike, healing through it as Disc seemingly feels like an impossible task. First, before we begin on how to play against Death Knight, the first step is understanding what they do and how they work. Essentially simplified, Unholy Death Knight wants to do two things. The first is building up Festering Wound stacks onto you. They do this by either cooldowns or with their main attack, Festering Strike. Necrotic Strike is their main way of building up pressure, and to use this it consumes one stack of Festering Wounds. Necrotic Strike is so scary due to it not only doing damage, but also applying a healing absorb to the target that can stack up. Death Knights also have two main offensive cooldowns you should look out for. These are Abomination and Unholy Frenzy. Furthermore, they also have a lot of tools to interrupt your cast. First is with their normal kick Mind Freeze, which is a 15 second cooldown, 3 second interrupt, which can be used from range. They also have the interrupt from their pet called Leap. This however can only be used whilst their pet is empowered by Dark Transformation, so keep an eye out for that. As for crowd control, they have two stuns. First is Asphyxiate, and then once again coming from the pet we have Gnaw, empowered once more when your pet is transformed. Okay, now that we know the basics of Death Knight, let's get into what talents and traits we should be using to help survive. Playing aggressive against a Death Knight as a Discipline Priest is often a death wish, so I suggest taking a more defensive talent and trait setup, including Death of the Shadows, as it gives you a nice bonus to Shadow Mend helping relieve some of the pressure from Necrotic Strikes. For talents, we're going Castigation and Contrition, for that added healing, as well as Masochisms to reduce some of the damage taken. As for PvP talents, we're again going full defensive, with Barrier being a great tool to help to survive, and Archangel to help heal through the damage. Lastly, I recommend Purified Resolve. As we'll see later, Dispelling plays a major part in surviving, so having this talent really adds up throughout the game, and isn't affected by dampening in 2v2 so makes it extremely strong and mana efficient compared to the other option which is Ultimate Radiance. Okay, now we're armed with the knowledge of what Death Knights do and what talents to pick, let's get into my top tips to survive Unholy Death Knight in 2v2. Necrotic Strike, as we know, is a healing absorb. Keeping ahead of this is extremely important, as letting it build up is one of the main ways Unholy Death Knight can build up pressure. Some great tips to stop this from building up is to simply always be healing and looking to stay ahead of it as Death Knights can potentially do up to 13 in a row if they pull their Festering Wounds and cooldowns. So if you see yourself at 90% and have a lot of Necrotics, don't go for an aggressive play. Simply stop and heal through the Necrotics to stop them from continuously building up. It's also preferred to always use Penance defensively, as we're using Castigation and Contrition. So, remember those Festering Wound stacks I was talking about earlier, the ones that Death Knight used to cast Necrotic Strike. Well, they're applied by Death and Decay as well, thanks to their talent Pestilence, with Death and Decay lasting 10 seconds and being on a 30 second cooldown. Moving out of this can really help reduce the amount of Necrotics a Death Knight can build up on you, so always try to be actively moving away from it where possible. Next up is a very important tip, and that's to dispel pretty much off cooldown. Death Knight has to spend runes to apply their damage over time effect, Virulent Plague, via Outbreak and dispelling this off cooldown forces them to have to reapply it, wasting runes that they could otherwise have spent on damage or piling up those necrotic strikes. We're also going to be getting a lot of healing from our purified resolve throughout the game doing this. Still on the topic of dispelling, Death Knights also have another damage over time effect you should be looking to dispel, and that's Soul Reaper. The main use of this ability is to generate runes for the Death Knight, however, it does some decent damage over time that you can simply avoid by dispelling, it's also a sign that the Death Knight is probably looking to burst, so keep your eyes peeled. This is undoubtedly the strongest cooldown Unholy Death Knights have currently. Not only does it deal insane damage, but also applies Festering Wound stacks every time it hits you. So not only is it going to be bursting you hard, but will allow the Death Knight to be stacking Necrotic Strikes simultaneously. Now to deal with this, you have three options. First being to shackle it. As it's undead, you can cast your Shackle Undead to keep it crowd controlled for its duration. 
If you're unable to do so, your other options are as it moves so slow is to attempt to kite it. If it can't melee you, it obviously can't do damage or apply festering wounds. And the third way of dealing with this is to simply kill it. If you have your DPS partner with you, have him kill the Abomination. It's got a very low health pool and can be killed in just a few seconds. Still on the topic of offensive cooldowns, Unholy Death Knight's other main offensive cooldown is Unholy Frenzy. This again is where you should be looking to either trade off the defensive cooldowns like Barrier, Pain Suppression or Trinketing if you're inside of a stun, or to have your teammate look to peel. What this does is again apply Festering Wounds, this time from the Death Knight's auto attacks, and also on top of that increases their haste, which in turn increases their rune regeneration rate. So if you see this buff on the Death Knight, be prepared to have him pump out a lot of necrotic strikes. Next up is to always maintain your Purge the Wicked on his pet and the possibly the healer if in range. Doing so will help quickly stack up your Death of the Shadows, helping you to quickly heal through his damage and necrotic strikes. Last up is the most obvious one and probably the most important and that's to have your teammate pill. Although this is something that you can't always 100% rely on, but it is your best shot at surviving. What your partner can do depends heavily on what class you are playing with, but things like crowd control, stuns, or even freedoms from windwalkers and hunters could be great at helping you build distance and getting a way to recover. It's also worth noting that roots are extremely effective on death knights, as all of their tools either break stuns or crowd control, but they do not have access to a root break, so use roots wisely if you have them available. Okay guys, that's it for this quick 2v2 guide. I hope you pick something up that you can use and as always hit that plus skill button if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.